Gaussian mixture model using EM method. Why do you use and why do you need a mixture of Gaussians? We have seen in many of our analysis, specifically if you recollect back some of the discussions which we had on Mahalanobis distance criteria, the covariance matrix under the base paradigm when we converted distance uh, a short of a, uh, a multivariate Gaussian function into a distance criteria. We made an assumption in most of this uh, of those analysis that the distribution or scatter of the data in whatever dimension it may be 1, 2, 3 or even higher is a Gaussian distribution. Okay? This sort of assumption may not happen in practice, but of course, most scientists and engineers still use a Gaussian distribution for modeling many uh, analysis in, in many different applications including signal processing, communication theory, uh, vibrations, whatever it may be. The advantage is that the Gaussian seems to be the one which is more closer to the natural distribution. Okay. Number the other main reason is it is easy to do mathematical manipulations if you have a Gaussian function specifically its differentiation exists up to as much of, of an order as you need in finite order. It is super smooth, it has various other types of advantages which this function provides over other distribution functions. But there may be situations where a distribution may not be strictly Gaussian in nature or nature is strictly not Gaussian. In such cases, there are methods which deal with multiple Gaussian. It is like as if I want to cluster the data into several components or several parts. And, we, and I assume or we assume that each of those clusters forms a Gaussian distribution. So, this leaves, leads us to an analysis which is based on GMM which is casually called or the Gaussian mixture model. Let us look at the expression of the Gaussian mixture. This is the univariate Gaussian distribution in 1D where uh, the mu is indicated by the mean. Okay. And of course, sigma is the standard deviation or the sigma square is the variance which is here. Okay. This is actually the variance, remember the sigma is called the standard deviation, variance is sigma square which is here as well. Okay. So, this is the normalizing uh, part of the function and this is the uh, fun exponential function. We had seen this and we had also extended this, this to a multivariate Gaussian distribution case where this mu becomes a vector of the dimension uh, of uh, uh, the data sample or instance x. Okay, I have changed this g to n here indicating this is a univariate Gaussian distribution in 1D. In higher dimension it is an n okay, where the sigma square is represent, replaced by the covariance term root over this and this is the Mahalanobis distance function within the exponential term which you have here inverse of the covariance matrix. This is nothing new. We had this discussion earlier under multivariate Gaussian distribution. We put this under the base paradigm and we formulated distance functions and we know under what properties of the covariance matrix we are going to have between class linear decision boundaries or DBs or non-linear decision boundaries. Actually the covariance matrix and its inverse of the covariance matrix dictates the corresponding property of the decision boundary. Okay. But now we what we will do is we will extend this to a case where we will have not only a multivariate Gaussian distribution, one of them in higher dimensions, but multiples of these spread over the data. And to do this, we basically need to estimate the covariance matrix and mu for a particular distribution and one such method is actually called the maximum likelihood estimation when we need to estimate this for a particular data, data samples. So, to do this, we look at this ML method, which is a simpler one to visualize. If you take the log of this uh, probability function, uh, 
uh, from the previous expression. Let us go back to the expression here. This is what we are taking the log about. And we did this when we actually formed a discriminant function for a particular class when we derived the distance criteria. So, if you do that, these are the terms. So, this is all expression is also not nothing new to you. You have a nonlinear term here and you have a certain constant terms in these expressions. Okay? We need to take the derivative of this because you need to actually maximize this. So, take the derivative with respect to the mean and the covariance term because these are the two parameters which you need to estimate for that function this will give you uh, an expression based or to, to estimate the mean. So, the mean estimated by the maximum likelihood or ML method where n is the number of sample points is given by this which is a trivial expression which you can get it from here and the covariance matrix is actually given by uh, the overall scatter matrix is given here. So, the ML method for estimation of the parameters mean and the sigma is giving you the same expressions which you have seen earlier. This is the covariance matrix, this is the way you estimate the covariance matrix and the corresponding mean for the data. What happens if you have multiple Gaussians or what is called as a mixture of Gaussians or Gaussian mixture and this is sometimes called as a linear superposition of a set of k number of Gaussians, capital K is the total number of Gaussians. Typically, k is more than 1, but of course, in a very special case, capital K can be equal to 1, where you have just have 1 Gaussian and the ov overall probability is now a summation of all k number of Gaussians, where this pi k is called a mixing coefficient. Hence, we will call this as the mixing coefficient for the kth Gaussian. The subscript k indicates the corresponding Gaussian and this expression is the normal distribution, normal multivariate. Gaussian distribution. Normal multivariate Gaussian distribution for the class k mu is a vector of the corresponding uh, dimension as the sample k and this is the covariance matrix for the kth Gaussian. Again I repeat this is the mixing coefficient for the kth Gaussian, this is the normal multivariate um, Gaussian distribution for the kth Gaussian. Okay. The only constraint which we put with respect to the mixing coefficients is that each of them lie within 0 to 1 and the summation of all this is equal to 1, summation of all the mixing. So, these are basically can be considered as weights, they are also called the weights for the corresponding Gaussian function. <coughs> and if you take the log likelihood, if you take the log likelihood of this overall function, which is a function of the mean, the covariance and the weight coefficients, uh, uh, which is also given as a function over all the data samples n, capital N is the total number of samples uh, and the p x n is given here. This is the p, uh, the probability for uh, the distribution for a sample x as given as this. So, this is what you will get, you can take the sigma. So, this is the same, so you replace this expression p of x n by this here and this is what you will get. Okay. Remember inside the logarithm you have the summation over k Gaussians and then you have it for as many number of samples. Okay. K is the index indicating, K is the index indicating the kth Gaussian and N is the index referring to a particular instance or the sample. Total number of samples is capital N, total number of Gaussians is capital K. This is the expression you have for the lack likelihood for a mixture of Gaussians multivariate Gaussian distribution is what we are considering. In this case, the maximum likelihood may not work to yield a closed form solution and you need a method of optimization which is iterative and that is what EM uh, or expectation maximization will give you. So, let us take this example um, to show what we are uh, planning to intend. If this is uh, a short of a scatter of the data set of data samples, which is obtained by a mixture of three Gaussians. You can see here that this the overall trend of the data does not follow a Gaussian distribution by itself. So, we can cluster the data into three different components and say each of these individual components 
uh, is a cluster following a Gaussian distribution. In fact, this particular data has been obtained or synthetically generated by three different Gaussian distributions as given by this three different isocontours. See, these are asymmetric Gaussian distributions in 2D, three different class means indicated by three different colors and their isocontour lines. And actually, if you look at this particular plot, this is showing a surface plot in two dimension where the height of uh, the surface at each individual point reflects the probability density of a corresponding cluster or a Gaussian. I repeat again, if you look back into the slide, this surface plot can be visualized to be an extension of this plot here where this plot indicates isocontour uh, lines or curves of equal distance with respect to the class mean, but at each point if you compute the probability, say you compute the probability at a point here and translate that to a height, this is the plot which you will get. So, you will get a surface plot where the height here on the right hand side is indicating the probability density of that function. So, what I mean is this is a synthetic data obtained by three Gaussian functions. Uh, now, overall, so this cluster density may look like this with respect to the three clusters. So, it is difficult to actually model this under a uh, 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 under un, under single Gaussian distribution even in 2D and these are the three sample points corresponding to three clusters. If we remove the cluster level or the color of this data, this is the data which you will have. So, you cannot model this perfectly using a single Gaussian and this data shows the example why do you need multiple Gaussians or a mixture of Gaussians to model this data. Of course, you could ask me a question, how do you know a priori how many Gaussian functions you need. Okay? So, that is something which is not under the scope of the discussion today and it is a matter left for individual researchers to find out for a given data set what is the optimal number k. There are methods to find out the optimal number k. If you have a data set a priori given to you, often you can find out some methods by which the, uh, the best k number of Gaussians you can fit on the data. In this case of course, since I know the data beforehand, I will say that the number of Gaussians is 3. But if you give you an arbitrary distribution which is non-Gaussian nature, whether k is equal to 2, 3, 4 or 10 or even more is very difficult to visualize in practice in general, but there are methods which, which people adopt to find out what is the ideal value of k uh, for the expression. So, we can think of mixing coefficients as prior probabilities for these individual components and so for given a value of k, we can evaluate the corresponding posterior probabilities called responsibilities which can be visualized as some latent variables in our expression which we saw a couple of slides back. Let us get back to the expression of the uh, log likelihood, but before that we look at this base rule in which we define uh, an expression of lambda k as a latent variable uh, given by under the base paradigm. So, this is nothing new for you, this is the posterior probability, the class priors and so on and so forth which we had discussed earlier. So, what we are doing here is uh, taking the class conditional probability to be our normal distribution a mixture of Gaussians. So, we have replaced this uh, term here by the numerator as given by the mixture coefficient and the corresponding unconditional prior to be the summation of all the Gaussians in the bottom. What is the mixing coefficient mu k here? The number of samples for a particular class divided by the total number of samples here. Okay. So, interpret that the number of samples for a particular class as the number of points assigned for a particular class, which is not be assigned beforehand. We do not know how many samples belong to a particular cluster k. So, that has to be obtained and found out, which in turn will actually give you the mixing coefficient pi k. So, what does the EM algorithm do? So, the EM algorithm is an iterative optimization technique, which is operated locally to find out uh, the set of values of the parameters. What are the parameters now we need to estimate here in a Gaussian mixture of Gaussian mixing coefficients, the set of class means for individual clusters. So, if there are k class, let us say somebody decides that I want to fit k mixture of Gaussians or k GMMs. 
or k gaussian mixes to be very precise on the data so k is known so if there are k gaussian clusters which you want to fit so you have k different means each of these mean has the dimension which is the same as the dimension of the data but there are k means k covariance matrices and k mixer coefficient so 3 multiplied by k seems to be the number of what not in terms of the number but k sets of parameters which you need to estimate okay well of course the mixing coefficients each of them is a scalar quantity that is all right uh, for uh, mu k there are k means each of dimension d k covariance matrices how many elements d square elements within each covariance matrix so these are the set of parameters one needs to estimate let us see how the em does it so there are two steps in em one is called the expectation another is called the maximization and this is done iteratively one after the another you have an ex expectation step or an estimation step as it is called followed by a maximization step and iteratively you follow this pair of steps one after another uh, in a sequence unless you have a condition of convergence which is satisfied at the end. So, estimation is for given parameter values we can compute the expected values of the latent variable and hence it is called an expectation step as well and then you have a maximization step which updates the parameters of the given model based on the latent variable calculated using the ML method. Okay. So, let us look at the M algorithm now. So, given a Gaussian mixture model our the goal is to maximize the likelihood function which you have seen a few slides back with respect to the parameters uh, uh, well pi, sigma and uh, mu comprising the means which is the mu the covariance matches sigma of the component and the mixing components uh, pi k. Okay. So, the first step is uh, initialize the means j is just an index running from 1 to k the covariance terms and the maximum coefficients and evaluate the initial value of the log likelihood. You can start with arbitrary set of random values here as well you can start with uh, arbitrary set of random values, but instead of being absolutely random what you could also do is take since you do not have something like a class information you can take the overall mean of the entire data set and take the individual mean of the clusters or the Gaussian uh, to be uh, the uh, data mean. Okay. The covariance matrix also could start there, but in fact there is a lot of uh, uh, some degree of research which has happened to find out what should be the good starting point for any iterative method or any optimization methods. The more closer you are to the final solution, the faster you will converge, the better and accurate solution is what you will have. So, instead of starting with absolute random values, in this case it is possible to do that, uh, you can have better estimates, but I am not touching those aspects in this particular talk. So, initialize let us say with some initial values or which could be even random values, you go to the E step of the M which is the expectation step. Uh, and uh, that you compute the latent variable as given by the expression here. So, this is for the kth Gaussian, this is the, the gamma k, the latent variable for the kth Gaussian, which and the corresponding expression is given here for the kth. So, in the denominator, you sum up all the uh, Gaussian distributions for that uh, the, the value for the corresponding x, which you have estimated using the random number. So, sum up all the Gaussians in the denominator and the corresponding uh, Gaussian is in the numerator. After you have estimated this, let us go to the third step which is the m step. In the second step, mind you, you have estimated this gamma j or the gamma k whatever the index uh, has changed, but it is the same uh, variable and that goes inside the expression here to compute the corresponding mean and the covariance term and this is the same as uh, the ML step done earlier except that the latent variable it is sort of a weight here which comes here and um, helps you to estimate a more accurate value of the mean and the covariance matrix. Remember the mixing coefficient must also be calculated using the latent variable computed in the E step in step number 2 earlier as given here correspondingly. So, once these mu j's are available here, so all the three you can see the three expressions here the mixing coefficients the covariance and the mean they are all computed using the data sample points and the latent variable which uses the normal distribution expressions as given here um, uh, for the E step. Then what you do? Obtain the, uh, the Gaussian mixtures using the parameters estimated in step number 3 to have your GMM. 
Now, what you need to do here is find out if the corresponding likelihood estimated here truly represents the data samples. If this is not, which will not typically happen in a few iterations, you go back to step number 2. So, you keep repeating steps number 2, 3 and 4, what essentially you are, you are repeating step number 2 and 3, which is the E and the M part of it, the expectation and the maximization of that and that help will help you to actually converge to a better solution. We will have uh, an illustration of this very, very soon in the next few slides and you put a convergence criteria and say that I will keep on repeating this process till my log likelihood of the Gaussian distribution satisfy some criteria of convergence. So, the convergence criteria could be such that in successive iterations or over a set of uh, few iterations, the parameters do not change. What are the parameters? The mixing coefficients uh, pi, uh, the mean mu and the covariance scatter sigma, they do not change over successive iterations or over a last few iterations. That is one condition of convergence which you can put. The other similar uh, uh, the one which you can use is given in step number 4 is when you estimate this log likelihood, if this itself does not change over a set of iterations. So, you compute and pre-store the log likelihood value which you have computed in the previous iteration, compare that with the current one and if the change is negligible below a certain threshold, you say that you have met a criteria for convergence and you say that you have estimated the corresponding Gaussians over the data distribution which you have. So, to wind up let us take an example now uh, in 2D and uh, these images have been obtained also from the uh, book by Bishop. So, we have taken it from the ebook Passion Recognition and Machine Learning. The reference of this book has been given at the beginning of uh, this particular lecture. So, what does it show here? This is a scatter. You can almost see it is visible that there are two different clusters of data. So, it is possible to fit them with two different Gaussian distributions. So, almost blindly I am selecting the value of k to be 2, but you can select k to be 3 or 4 also. There will be some amount of convergence whether good or bad is another thing to be uh, uh, seen, but in this case let us take the example of a equal to 2 and let us say the Gaussians have been initialized at these two places with the corresponding mean and scatter. These two ellipses show that there is a Gaussian here, k equal to 1, k equal to 2 Gaussian is here, the, these are the corresponding means at the center of these ellipses and the distributions the scatter is in 2D. So, as you keep proceeding, you remember what did we do in the EM algorithm? There were two typical steps, one was the E step in which you are estimating after the initial set of random values have been has been used to start the cycle for the corresponding set of variables or the uh, 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 parameters of the Gaussian mixture model. You use a E step to estimate the latent variables, then using the in the third step you go to the M step where you actually estimate the parameters again using the latent variable and continue this process. Of course, you keep a watch on the log likelihood. As you proceed, you can see that these are the initial set of points which are marked in blue will be assigned to this particular Gaussian and what will happen to this set of points because they are the ones which are going to be close, closest to the corresponding Gaussian. Remember this was the initial stage okay, and you start assigning the distribution because this will the points lying close to the blue cluster here or the blue the Gaussian marked in this blue ellipse uh, will be closer to this set of points and hence they will be assigned to this corresponding Gaussian and the points which are labeled in red now will be assigned to this. So, what do you do now? After this assignment you recompute the parameters, the mixing coefficients, the mean and the scatter. Let us see how the recomputed means after the first iteration look like. So, once you recompute they will appear like this from the data. This is the distribution for the points which have been assigned to the Gaussian this is step number 1 and the corresponding one which is in 2 will be marked here. This is after the second step. So, this is how it slowly start converging. You reassign the points once again and this is how the it is this is at step number 5. We can see that the uh, the one of the Gaussians tend is tending to converge to this 
close cluster of points marked in blue, the, the points here are becoming red following another Gaussian distribution after 20 iterations you have almost converged to this point and this is the final stage of iteration where uh, if you still iterate you will not have a change in either the parameter values or the log likelihood criteria after you compute with this set of parameters. Okay, let us have a look at this animation once again. So, this is the starting point, this is the starting point. You do, a priori do not know where are the clusters, where it should put the Gaussian. So, you can start almost anywhere and then this is how the convergence takes place. Second iteration, fifth iteration and the twentieth iteration. Okay. So, this is a method by which you can fit a set of Gaussians to uh, a certain scatter of data points which do not follow a univariate single Gaussian function. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a method which is actually used not only to form clusters, but actually used to model data points because after this you can actually apply all your methods of classification or if you want to transform clusters, group them under certain criteria and so on. So, uh, this is one method which is used to model as well as form clustering. Thank you very much.